Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, I have not been able to put up videos so often for the last few weeks, but um, so I thought of uh, putting up another tutorial video like I used to, and we're going to talk about ubiquitin proteasomal pathway. So first of all, let's see what is the structure of the ubiquitin proteasome or proteasome as a whole. So basically the proteasome is a 26S complex or 26S proteasome. And the structure is something like a cylinder. And the cylinder has got sort of The cylinder has got sort of two different parts. So the green part over here, this is the 20S complex. And the red parts that is on the either side, this is the 19S complex. So both of them, they make up the 26S complex. Now this 20S complex, it is composed, it is composed of 28 subunits, which is again encoded by 14 different genes, 14 different genes. Now again, in the 20S, if we divide that, we have got we've got four ring-like structures. And the rings that are on the periphery, so this one, And this one, let's shade them out. These are made of alpha subunits, and the rings in the middle they are made of beta subunits. So there are seven alpha over there, seven alpha on the bottom, and 7 alpha, uh, 7 beta for one ring and 7 beta for the other ring. So total we have 14 beta subunits making up the two ring as a whole. I mean basically it is like this. The subunits are arranged like this. I mean if we, uh, if we imagine it to be a 3D, 3D model then it would be, the units would be also, the subunits would be also at the back. And same goes for the beta. So 7, 7 alpha and 7, 7 beta. So this is sort of the structure of the 26S proteasome. Now the 20S, the barrel in the middle, this 20S, this is basically the functional unit. And the 19S on both the sides, these are the regulatory units. Right, so basically the 19S, what they, uh, what they perform is, when they, when they see that there is a protein tagged with ubiquitin, then that recognition part is done by 19S and it brings in the protein and puts it inside the 20S where it is degraded. Right, so now we're clear with the structure, let's move on to the process. But before going on to the process, we have 
three different uh, proteins which help in sort of getting the ligated, I mean ubiquitin ligated protein uh, into the proteasome. These are E1, E2, and E3. So E1 is basically an activating protein. E2 is conjugating. And E3 is a ligating protein. So these are the functions. And we're going to elaborate that when we look at the process. Now, first what happens, let's say we have a ubiquitin molecule. This ubiquitin molecule, it requires an ATP, requires an ATP and the ubiquitin is bound to an AMP. So from ATP, the pyrophosphate that is released. Now this ubiquitin ligated to AMP has to be activated. So the E1 protein comes in, which is the activating protein. It, it kicks off the AMP that is bound to the ubiquitin and it ligates itself with the ubiquitin molecule, right? And this bond, this bond that is formed over here, this is a thioester bond, right? And so from here, the AMP, it is going to move out. Next, what happens, the E1 takes the ubiquitin and puts it onto the E2. And the E1 sort of falls off. So now the ubiquitin is onto the E2 protein. Now what happens, the E2 bound to the ubiquitin it comes to the E3 complex. So let's say this is the E3 complex or E3 ligase and the E2 bound to the ubiquitin will come and bind to the E3. Now the E3 also brings in the target protein. I mean the target protein that needs to be ubiquitinylated. So E3 is also bound to the target protein on the other side. Now the ubiquitin, this, this needs to be transferred onto the target protein in order for the target protein that needs to be degraded to be ubiquitinylated, right? So what happens, there can be two ways by which the target protein is ubiquitinylated. The first way, the first way is the E2 will give off the ubiquitin to E3, which in turn will give off the ubiquitin to the target protein or this is an indirect case but for a direct case the E2 can directly give the ubiquitin to the target protein. So this one would be the direct mechanism and this is the indirect mechanism. So these are the two different ways by which the ubiquitin can be transferred onto the target protein. Now the target protein would have a lysine residue 
onto which the ubiquitin the ubiquitin will be delivered and specifically the epsilon amino acid the epsilon amino group of the lysine would be bound to the ubiquitin right so either directly or indirectly the ubiquitin is bound to the lysine and like this a lot of ubiquitin needs to be bound to the target protein in order for it to get properly ubiquitinylated and recognized by the proteasome complex so after the target protein is bound to the uh, ubiquitin that is the polyubiquitin it is going to go to the proteasome let's say this is the upper portion and this is the lower 19s so this is going to be recognized by the 19s and the protein would be sent inside the 20s which would eventually degrade the protein into the small amino acids which was making up the protein and these amino acids can be again recycled to make other proteins so this is the whole step so this is the whole process of proteasomal sorry proteasomal destruction so once more the ubiquitin would be first bound to amp then e1 would come in e1 would come in and e1 would push off the amp and would bind itself to the ubiquitin then e2 will come in and again it is going to push off the e1 and it will bind to the ubiquitin so over here also this bond is again a thioester bond so now the e2 bound to the ubiquitin will come to e3 and it can directly or indirectly transfer the ubiquitin to the target protein and like this a lot of ubiquitin molecule needs to be bound to the target protein specifically the epsilon amino group of a lysine on the target protein now the target protein which needs to be destroyed is perfectly tagged with ubiquitin and this can go to the proteasomal uh, complex and be degraded to its subsequent amino acids which can again be recycled into different or other proteins so that was it about the uh, proteasomal destruction pathway and what i would do i would try to put up a link in the description where you can get this uh, this document that i just scribbled on and you know you can keep it as a reference when you read the topic so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye bye